Beginning Ye 2.0, Part 5 of 15, Passing Data with the Site Controller to the Index page. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make a, do a couple of fixes. We need to fix the style CSS and bring it up to date to Bootstrap 3.2, which is used by Yi. The grid system is different and fix the behavior so that the sign up and products creates uh, SQL work correctly. Uh, there was, uh, I was using some older code in that and I needed to bring that up to date and get everything corrected on that. Um, and then our main part of this is we're going to modify the site controller and the index view to pass and render data. And we're also going to create a new shop controller and some uh, and in the shop controller it'll create some views for us as well uh, that we need so let's get started remember you can get the uh, code at https github.com tsk matrix yecom Okay, our first fix is to the bootstrap uh, code we have in our style CSS. Uh, we need to bring it up to uh, bootstrap 3.2. And bootstrap 3.2 has changed the grid system a little bit. It used to use uh, spans, and now it's using these uh, columns. So it's got a, the row must be placed within a container or a container fluid, which is what we have. And then we need to uh, use our grid options down here. What we're going to use is the dot column mid three, <clears throat> pardon me, three, so that uh, we get four across <clears throat> our grid system. So a uh, column mid three would give us four across. So we just need to do that and change our, uh, our CSS file. All right, so we're in our IDE. We come down to our front end web, to our CSS folder and our style, and we bring that up into our editor and we, search for uh, span 3 is what you'll search for unless of course you download all this from github and then it's already done for you uh, but all I did was a search and replace for span 3 to be column dash md dash 3 and that will fix our um, CSS files so that uh, everything will come out the way we need it to. Okay, that's all there was for that one. We'll get on to our next fix. All right, so go to your common folder and the models folder and we're going to pull up both user PHP and Yecom Active Record PHP because that's where we have our behaviors. Uh, user PHP uses its own behavior while uh, the Yecom Active Record extends this out uh, to any um, model that we want it to go to uh, just by declaring that uh, that model extends the Yecom Active Record. You want it to look just like this now. I had a um, value in here that was causing a problem. And that's only because uh, it, it, it wanted to create a new expression. And we didn't need it to do that. It does that automatically uh, in Y2. So we wanted to change that up. Um, then in our... We wanted to do the same thing in our function uh, behaviors 
uh, in user PHP so that that works. This will clear up all the problems that we were having with sign up and with uh, products and different things that were um, we were trying to add. We were trying to create some things, and we were getting our uh, we were getting SQL errors from the database. So that should clear that up. Okay, come on over and uh, pull up your front end uh, controller, site controller. And right here in our action index is where we're going to start making some changes. Okay, we need to pull some uh, data from our database and then pass it to our index page. Okay. So um, I declared an array because uh, I've got to make an array of arrays. So I declared an array, subcats, uh, to carry our subcategories. And then I called for categories. And using the uh, ye, new, the new way to do things in ye, I, I love the way they, they've got this working now. So we have a product categories model. And we need to find where our product parent product category ID is zero as an array, and we want all of those. So it'll pull back each of our categories. Uh, you'll want to go ahead and create some categories. I've already done that for you, uh, but uh, if you'll pull the uh, database uh, information, it'll it'll pull uh, it'll put all that in there for you or you can uh, just do it yourself if you have different categories and different product types that you want to put in there, uh, be my guess. But I use the product parent product category ID of zero to indicate my top categories. So uh, that's what we're looking for. And then for each of those categories as a row, uh, I need to uh, pull... Um, these product categories, which are subcategories of the product, uh, of the category, excuse me, a subcategory of the category, uh, so that we get some uh, information onto the page. And then our featured products will be a find, and then we're going to use uh, product medias. So let's take a look at that real quick uh, over here in our products model, common products model. You'll notice that right here, we have product medias. This is our alias for um, getting information out of product medias. Uh, so we're going to use this. So the product model will use product medias to pull all the product media out. So there's a lot of um, database work that you, you know, just uh, data input that you have to do uh, to get this ready to go. But uh, other than that, the code works, and uh, there are some uh, already some things in there that you can use uh, that have been uploaded to the GitHub site. So you might want to check that out. Uh, product Categories has basically the same thing. It has something on products, so uh, we can pull products from Product Categories. And then Product Medias has the same thing. It has a product. So... Uh, it will pull. It can pull things from products from product media. So those are all interesting things uh, that we can do with those models. Okay. So, but we're concerned with our site controller, and it's going to pass these uh, three arrays into our index view, and then in index, we need to. Uh, Come on down here. Let's get out of the top end of that. Uh, right here, you can pull the array up so you can view the array. Just uh, uncomment these, and you can pull up the arrays to see what the arrays look like uh, that they're coming out of. And then right here, we start a for each. <clears throat> Pardon me. We start a for each. We don't need that line, so we're going to take that line out. So our for each uh, starts here, and 
we have some information here that we're going to pass into it. So for each category as cat, we're going to take a look at it, the path. We've set up a path to our category, and then we pull our icon, which is the image that we want, out and put that in. We're using the Yi app request base URL to get all this information. And then we use uh, our good old uh, font awesome fonts here. And then we pull the name for the title. And then we pull our product category ID and tag that onto the back of this so it'll be a there'll be an ID number. So the shop index will have an ID number when we go out there. Then we also had a to-do to do uh, uh, another for each for our subcategory so that we could get our subcategory information out of there. And we only want it for particular subcategories. So if the subcategory equals uh, the, the parent ca product category ID equals the category product category ID, then go ahead and give us the name and tag on the product category ID on the end of our um, URL, our link URL. And we want to do the same thing for our see all. And then uh, we no longer need a sub counter. So we'll take that out. Some experimentation on my part. And we get our close tag here, or our closing uh, curly brace here for our uh, whole f top end for each. We do the same basic thing for our featured products. Notice that uh, the call mid three item is now in place on this. That's one of the things you'll have to do when you just see span three, just do a find and replace on that and you'll get, uh, put your call mid three in there. Uh, but we do basically the same thing. We pull uh, our, our featured products and we get our image. Now this is interesting, uh, the array has the product medias and then it has another array underneath it which is zero. They're all going to have a zero array and that's the one you want to use uh, and we want to get the image URL out of that so that that gets tagged on to or tacked on to our um, the end of this uh, little uh, snip right here, this little text right here, so that our link comes up properly. And then we're going to use our shop details, and we'll add something to that to make sure that we get to the uh, detail page. It gets a um, correct uh, ID number going to it so that it pulls up the correct uh, product. Okay. Well, that was pretty simple. Okay, so with all the fixes in place uh, for our CSS and with our data involved, this is what our page should look like now. Well, we have categories and we have uh, our category subcategories going in and it would... Uh, It's not finding our object because we haven't created that yet. And we're going to do that next. We'll create our shop object, our shop controller, and our pages. And here are our featured products. So we have uh, some products in our database with some prices and some images. Okay. And we'll take a look at our shop and make our shop and our controllers for our shop and our views uh, and actions for our shop. That'll be next.
Okay, so we want to create our controller, so we go into our uh, G and go to controller generator and we want to create a shop controller okay and we want to create a new products a product detail a checkout and a new customer along with our index page so we hit preview and we get all these views and controller. Now notice that it's going to go into front end controllers which is where we need it. And we need to generate these. And so we now have a new shop controller. We have new views under shop folder. And we've adjusted our index PHP or modified our PH, uh, index PHP view <coughs> in our site to use uh, the new um, CSS fix. So I did fix that uh, so that it would come across. It was using some old uh, bootstrap code and we needed to update that so that it would use uh, some new bootstrap code uh, or at least come up to date to 3.2 uh, bootstrap. So let's take a look at our shop controller. Uh, as you see we have a checkout, our index, a new customer, a new product. Um, so like new products that came in, you know, what are new products? Uh, these are, you know, like featured products that we're going to have, uh, but these are new products. So we'll say, yeah, well, if, if it's new, if it's on a certain date, something like that. <clears throat> and then of course our product detail page. So we're, gonna, we're going to render product detail, uh, which will be uh, right here. So our product detail page will be here, and we're going to be passing some information to that. Uh, we'll also be passing some information to our index page uh, for our products page, um, kind of a shop page, so that everything's going to show up there. So this is where we'll do all of that. Okay. Um, I think that's all there is to the new shop controller. If you'd like to check out the index, it's just an empty file uh, so uh, we're going to be changing all that up so that's all there is to that uh, there's no uh, model for this uh, since we're not going to be doing any uh, <clears throat> pardon me if we're not going to be doing any uh, crud on this other than uh, the basic crud that we need to do it's going to be handled by the controller rather than by uh, any model or anything like that okay all right well i'll see you next time in part number six okay this ends part five it's uh should be up on the github site uh, remember you can always get the code there so check all that out and we'll see you next time beginning ye 2.0